All right, continuing onward in prompt engineering, we're in the last part of this, where we talk about content creation and structured prompt patterns. Content creation is certainly a very common thing that you, you will use generative AI for. You thought there was a lot of fluff on the internet? You've not seen anything yet. I'm sure there's going to be, there probably already is, entire blogs that are maintained just by generative AI. The template pattern. This is a pretty common pattern. This is where using the following template create a new life insurance summary. So this would be this would be an example zero shot because you're not training it on really you're not giving it any examples. But you're just saying here is a here's a template. And typically you would throw then a bunch of unstructured data at it and it would try to take that unstructured data and put it into that that template for you. The meta language plat uh, pattern, this uh, pattern uses specific placeholder instructions within the prompt. So it's, it's fill in the blank, really. Draft a personalized email to client name informing them about the benefits of... So draft a personalized email to client name informing them of the benefits and you're giving it this information as part of the, the, the context. The recipe pattern, the recipe pattern provides a step-by-step -step instructions or procedures guiding the AI to produce content that follows a logical sequence. Very common pattern in code generation. You're just giving it a step-by-step -step guide. Here you're saying provide a step-by-step -step guide on how to file a life insurance claim, include all the necessaries. But it's very much like a recipe, like cooking lasagna, I don't know, something, something like that. Alternative approaches pattern. This asks the AI to present multiple solutions. Uh, I have seen this used in code generation. Sometimes you'll see ChatGPT do that where it gives you two, two different options, but to describe three different strategies for a young family to, min uh, to maximize their life insurance coverage. And again, I work for uh, an insurance company. I lead an AI group there. So uh, you'll, you'll see a lot of life insurance examples from me. Outline expansion pattern. This is similar to the template a, a, a bit, but you, you give it an outline. So what's one of the first things you do when you're writing a paper? At least what I would do is I would write an outline. And then you're basically giving it the outline for the paper that you want to write, and then it goes and writes you. Obviously, since I work for a university, make sure that your professor lets you do that if you're, if you're doing this for an, an academic sort of a paper. The menu actions pattern. Uh, this directs the AI to provide options to much, really much like these. The menu action pattern is really much like these old school sort of menus that you would see in mostly textual applications. But in this case, I'm saying list the available policy options for a 35 year old non-smoker seeking life insurance coverage of 500,000. So we're just gonna give them a nice menu of different different options that they can choose from. You hear about the tail generation pattern a lot. This is a, this is really where you just give it the start and it writes the rest. So you finish writing the following letter to a client on their policy renewal. Dear client name, we wanted to remind you, blah, blah, blah. And then you just usually put the three dots or something like that, the ellipsis, and it will, it will continue. Similar to, I mean, the more for like creative stories, these kind of things, you can certainly use the creation prompt. Again, you use, or the pattern, again, you use the, the three dots. Content generation prompts. Here you're basically just, you're just asking it to create content for you. Write a blog post titled Top 5 Myths. I've seen this one a lot. Write a blog post. Write a article in the style of pick your newspaper. These, these kind of things. Classification prompts, we had a homework assignment related to this sort of thing. But this is basically asking, telling it, um, classify the following clients into the appropriate policy types. So you're giving it three clients here, and this is zero shot, you're not telling it anything, you're not giving any examples of this, but for these three people, what type of a life insurance policy would you recommend for them? Translation prompts, translate the following life insurance uh, FAQ to another language. This is very common, this is done a lot. You just ask it to translate it into a different language for you and then you just dump into the prompt what you want translated. 
I use these a whole lot, data extraction. This is where you just dump a bunch of unstructured data kind of at the end of the prompt. And then at the beginning, you say, okay, extract for me the birthdays, extract city names, whatever you all want extracted, and make sure to tell it what to do if it doesn't find one of these, otherwise it'll guess. So tell it, put in none if, if it can't find one of, one of these for sure. Style-based prompts, uh, this, this is when you're telling a specific tone. You can tell it to be sarcastic. I, I wouldn't advise it. You can tell it to be cheerful, helpful, inspirational. You're just telling it the prompt. Write an informative article. Write a persuasive article, the, these, these kind of things. Interactive or iteration prompts. These are ones that will be an ongoing exchange. So based on the following client profile, recommend a suitable life insurance policy after the recommendation. Um, I'll provide feedback to help you adjust the article appropriately. So you're, you're giving it this information and then it is basically going to go through and uh, then ask you follow-up questions related to that, trying to get to what the best policy for this particular person would be. Again, going with my cons my consistent theme here of life insurance examples. So thank you for watching this video, and if this was useful, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the rest of this course on generative AI, and so that you can see my other projects on AI and Gen AI. Thank you for watching.